Have you ever wondered why some food tastes more fresh than others, even if they're stored in the exact same way? And you might think maybe it comes down to the ingredients used or how fresh the food was before packaging. But there's one hidden factor at play here you're probably forgetting. Because it's not just about the food, it's also about the packaging. If you grew up in the American public school system like me, every day or sometimes twice a day, you drink a little carton of milk that looks like this. And you're probably thinking, no problem, at least that's like kind of a healthy, you know, beverage for kids. But this type of milk, it has the worst taste, the worst off flavors. And this is not my opinion. This is, I will prove it to you. And it's not that the milk itself is low quality. The problem is with this specific packaging. And while you've probably never thought too hard about what specific packaging your food is in, these materials, I mean, they're in contact with your food for weeks, months, sometimes even years. It really matters what specific packaging is used because it impacts the final quality and flavor of the food. This has been researched when it comes to milk. And I will show you a study where researchers looked at milk in six different packaging, including glass, four different plastics, and paperboard cartons to see, you know, how is the flavor of milk being changed simply by the type of packaging used. And guess what? On day zero, just the day the milk was filled into the paperboard cartons, they were the only milk to already have an off flavor. This is due to the flavor compound called hexanol increasing in concentration in the milk. And by day five, the milk in paperboard cartons has another defect. This time it's a stale or refrigerated off note. And this is due to a different flavor molecule increasing in concentration. This is due to a molecule called styrene, which we also know is coming from the specific packaging. This movement of flavor molecules from the food to the packaging or from the packaging to the food, there's a term for this. It's called flavor migration. And we know this happens to some extent because flavor molecules, they're quite tiny. They can easily move around to different places. And if you've had to take chemistry classes like me and I've taken more chemistry classes than any human being should, you might know this is called diffusion or Fick's first law of diffusion, which says that molecules, they're always gonna move from an area of high concentration to low concentration. So if a flavor is really high in the milk, it is going to try to move to the packaging as well as vice versa. But it's not just drinks or liquids that interact with the packaging to sort of have these flavor changes. This also happens to solid food. And for this, let's talk about butter because butter is delicious. So at least when I grocery shop, I usually buy butter in like this wax parchment paper, which you're gonna see kind of sucks flavor wise. Every once in a while, there is butter that's in like aluminum foil. Most often, I think carry butter is the only one that I find in aluminum foil. But let me know in the comments if you buy butter in aluminum foil, because this might be a game changer for you. Check out this study that looked at different packaging for butter. Now samples that are W, this stands for wax paper packaging and butter that was in wax paper. So they developed after six months, a stale or refrigerator like off flavor. You kind of describe that as like plasticky or chemical like, but check out the samples of butter that are stored in aluminum foil or F here. These samples after six months of storage, they don't have that off flavor. It says ND for not detected. Why? Well, it comes back to that off flavor due to the molecule styrene again, because again, the wax parchment paper, the packaging is providing that styrene molecule. It goes into the butter and after being, you know, stored for six months, there's enough styrene in the butter that you can actually taste or perceive that off flavor. And this only happened when butter was in the wax parchment paper. The aluminum foil did not have this off flavor after six months months. And panelists confirmed this. The butter that was packaged in aluminum foil kept its like nutty and cooked flavors, 
Well, the butter in the wax parchment paper lost these notes over time. The takeaway, if you want butter that tastes as good as the day you purchased it, you better buy it in aluminum foil. But just because certain packaging can give foods or drinks a better or more fresh flavor, doesn't mean it's these products that people actually buy in the grocery store. And I found a super interesting example of this using Iberian ham, which I do not know what Iberian ham is. I've never had it, probably never will, but apparently it's a real delicacy in Spain. Most Iberian ham found in the grocery store, there's really only two options for packaging. You will see it vacuum packed where all the air is sort of sucked out, or you'll also see modified atmospheric packaging or MAP for short, where that air is sucked out but replaced with a mixture of gases like carbon dioxide and nitrogen. And while both these types of packaging help preserve the ham, you should expect by now, they also will change how the flavor or aroma of the ham develops. In this study, over 250 people tried the two types of ham and consistently the ham in the modified atmospheric packaging was rated as having a better uh, odor, a better flavor, and a, a good texture that was associated with a higher quality of ham. Meanwhile, the vacuum packaged ham had a very muted flavor and dull aroma. But here's the twist. 70% chose the vacuum packaged. Why? Well, the consumer said that the vacuum packaged meat looked better. I mean, we eat with our eyes, that's for sure. But also food choices are very complicated. It can sometimes just depend like, what did your parents do? What did your mom buy at the grocery store? And what foods did you grow up with? It's not always gonna be, you know, decisions based on these slight nuances in off flavors. And sometimes the flavor migration doesn't even matter. Let me explain. When orange juice was filled into four different types of containers, one being glass and three being different plastics, they did see that the flavor molecules, the flavors of different molecules changes over the shelf life of orange juice. And you can see that here in this figure where it shows just the flavor molecules on the x-axis for one type of plastic packaging. And it does change over time because we see this flavor migration between the orange juice and the packaging. But even though each of these different packaging reacted with the orange juice and it off flavor in a different way, what was the end effect? Nothing. When the sensory panel tried these four different orange juices, they tasted, they perceived no difference. How could this be? Well, first off, flavor of a food or a drink, it's more than just the seven flavor compounds they were able to track in this study. It's probably hundreds, if not thousands of different flavor molecules that come together to make the flavor profile of orange juice. And say, even if these are the seven main flavor compounds in orange juice, they're still missing a lot of nuance in the flavor profile of orange juice. Secondly, for us to perceive these flavor molecules, they have to be above the flavor threshold. This is basically the minimum concentration of a specific molecule for the human nose to perceive that flavor. So as long as the packaging doesn't take so many flavor molecules that it gets below the flavor threshold, or that the packaging doesn't provide too many off flavors above their flavor threshold, really what we're perceiving as human beings, it's not going to change much. If you enjoyed this deep dive into food packaging and flavor, next I would check out my video where I investigate how food microstructure impacts how much you eat.